Good morning. You're welcome to this information about me and my family and how we're regaining our strength in this society after it tried to kill us. And now, for the first time of ever, we're going to let you all know what has happened and we do not want to feel ashamed, we just want to bring this out so we can have some calm and peace in our lives. And I'll try to assist you, yeah? May I? Yes, this is my mother speaking and I trust her very much. Okay, I'll show myself just for the record and then I'll go into the background. So, dear beloved Ruth, our life has been very hard and I'm very grateful for your support, Ruth, you have had. You have been marvellous support. You have been simply the best in our hard life. And uh, I'll just try to summarise all these terrible things today so we can get them out of our life. So please don't get emotional and we'll just get through it sort of mm -hmm. without trying to get emotion to it. Mm -hmm. We'll just mention and uh, <clears throat> deliver the information to the states that have been involved in this systemic crime towards children and young teenagers and young women, young fertile women, which you have been. So, I have been taking uh, <coughs> your report before, earlier, and I will just summarize and you will just comment on it, mm -hmm. what you would like to. So you have uh, described many systemic crimes that have happened to you in different countries. And um, you started talking about how even the fact of your birth was hard as you came into the family where your sister was ill, child, uh, already when you came, you came into a family where there was a sick child when you were born, you were born into a sick child family. And that had to do that you were born in uh, 1989, in January, and your sister was born in 1987, summer, which is a year after Chernobyl. And you were born in Riga, Latvia, uh, Ventspils, rather, in Latvia. You were born on, on the coast of the most radioactive sea in the world, in Ventspils. And uh, <coughs> your mother, that is me, was pregnant through those times when it was very radioactive after Chernobyl. And your sister had a tumour and she was... In, uh, she was operated later for that, as a child at three years. And we were in extreme distress and you as a child suffered from that a lot, of course. And then you were mentioning also <coughs> that um, Latvia, the country where you were born, should have helped uh, your family with this, but there was no help at all, which you then <clears throat> make a play on the Latvian country, um, accusing it for no support for your family, in this case. Is it so? I didn't hear the last sentence. Uh, you, you accuse Latvia for not helping uh, your family in such a distressful situation. Well, one thing I found miraculously is that uh, and, uh, to, and I'm saying that in a sarcastic way, is how, how only 10% of the Latvian population can be happy and vivid throughout 20 years of experience of the Soviet where we should not criminalize human persons and I feel as if I was criminalized. First of all, the accidents happened of Chernobyl which gave the whole area of North Europe 
the thickness of radiation, which should have been brought up as the, one of the most... Uh, the biggest crimes. Yeah. Towards, towards the childhood of... of, of Newborns. Of, yeah. And even infertility. So you were at least lucky to be born. But, but this is a terrible crime, you, you so rightfully say. And uh, <clears throat> I have just put there that you were mentioning here also uh, that your grandfathers died very young uh, for their age because they were not getting uh, their tr illnesses treated then. Yeah. And they were having no support from Latvia. And um, and your mother, your sister was having, uh, who was very ill, could not be cured in Latvia. No, she had no chance of survival in Latvia. She had to go away to Sweden to be cured, where which in Sweden was the only, which in Sweden was the only sustainable medical help that the world could offer. After that came other new medicine, but even in Gothenburg the, the medicine broke down after a G8 meeting, after Russia's involvement in the politics. Nevertheless, Latvia couldn't tell, say, your sister, so... Um your mother fixed the treatment in Sweden yeah. and the whole family had to move away from the, their... From family. our beloved country, yeah. from our magical, spiritual love, where we were born in this country, where we were given beauty, health, water. The Latvians have a beautiful celebrational song which is sung in the revolutionary days after Soviet disappeared from Latvia. And the, and, the, and the song is about what will the children drink now? Will it be the death will it be the water of life or the water of death? And this is what we have to maintain as one of the biggest and questions of life. What will it be? Will it always be like this, horrible for people to survive? So, um, you, this is something then that you accuse Belarusia for uh, having the Chernobyl accident, I guess. Who could have ever let so many stupid idiots work at one of the most dangerous facilities in the world. And after that, there was a whole blackout in the whole Russian society. There was a brainwash. Nobody remembered what had happened. The whole Russian society was brainwashed. Anyway, it is um, a planned act that... that uh Catastrophe. Well, it wasn't meant by God. And it destroyed uh, Soviet. So we, we have still to have to remain calm when we say planned act, because usually planned is only meant by God. But see, there have been deceitful men and women in these Satan, natures. Satan has had powers too, you know. In these natures where we have been deceived into believing that plants can also be by God's hand, but this has also been destroyed by the only and only a human man. Because they men are the most vicious <laughs> creatures of this whole land. They are manipulated by the darkness. Yeah. So. Uh, then you mention here, I have put notes, uh, that you, were, uh, you have been indeed distressed in the foreign country, Sweden, where you had to emigrate to save your sister, and you couldn't 
be with your kin, with your family, with your roots? Yes, I have a huge family here. I have many siblings, I have many, many child, children to play with, but it was all destroyed. Once I come back, it was always a question of what has happened, what is happening, you. what is wrong, what is right. There was never this calm which others have maintained in their life. In their tribe, yeah. Yeah. So you were a lonely child with your sister and your mother because your father left the family later. So, and you had to learn foreign language that uh, was very hard too. No, for me it wasn't difficult because I have intelligence. Uh, yeah, but you never, you never could use your mother tongue. Uh, you yeah, for me it was difficult. My mother never to teach me even the Latvian alphabet and I never actually had any of such interests. I you didn't have time, it's just, uh, yeah. you had to go to kindergarten and you had to sort of, your mother had to survive to, alone with children, it was very tough. Yeah. And, uh, and then you had to go to um, childcare where uh, there were many immigrants. You, it yeah. was not just Swedish. It was not just Swedish, which was weird, which is always around me. It was always immigrants, always the... The, always the, the whole magnitude of power was always focused about immigrants. It was never about my own country, about the Swedish country, about the nature and such things that interested me. It was always about war and how racism and what we've done wrong in my country and what I could have done wrong. And life was never ever as it was, it was a brainwash and it's the technology that is being used and many is dying because of it and many is hurt because of it and many leave their families because of it. There seems to be nothing in reality anymore. Yeah, yeah so, so <clears throat> then uh, there is this fact that the area that might have contaminated and made people ill was also this Baltic Sea that made your sister definitely ill after Chernobyl. Uh, the contamination there might have come from uh, Nova Zemla, that is Russia, because in the 60s they had these atomic bomb tests. So Baltic Sea is mainly radioactive, not for Chernobyl, but from atomic tests in 60s, 70s, which big czar bomb, but was the biggest, yeah, atomic, biggest bomb atomic bomb, bomb in, the world. in the world. And it just drained down into the Baltic Sea. And uh, so, so, and Sweden too. In the middle of Sweden, there is. Because no everybody notices something is wrong with the skies, with the trees, it's dirty, the water is polluted. The magic is gone, the air is unbreathable. It is something that is wrong. So the food, even the Swedish food is contaminated because it grows in the middle of cent the central Sweden, the enormous yeah. area that is yeah. polluted with radiation yeah. too. And uh, it is not test being tested. For, so, so, and that can get any disease. You can get any disease from those radioactive things. So. So actually, even the uh, European Union is not taking care of the food in the European Union. It is not protecting the food from radioactive substances. I didn't hear, I was focused. Uh, European yeah. Union, uh, Brussels, uh, you know, and all yeah. these institutions, they, they don't control food for us, which, which is a criminal act. They don't control food. Well, it's well, it's only been this past year I've seen uh, after the presidential of Latvia in the European Union, I saw a big change in the Riga city. There was new restaurants opened and it was with 
quality food, not just with shit food, where you can only shit from it. Mm -hmm. And it was nutritious, it was healthy, it was actually quite enjoyable, and it was a quality that was missed in a city as beautiful as Riga, where quality used to be something that was so highly appreciated. But still they don't check radiation in all foods and it doesn't smell, you know. You can't see it properly. Which... Um... Labdien! Arturs! Jano! Labi! No, it's too easy, it's too easy, it's too easy. Nu jā, bet es varēšu tikai pēc divām stundām kaut kur. Nu, es vēl nedomāju. Jā, es uzvanīšu. Bet es esmu ļoti aizņemta, tā ir ļoti lūdzu atvainojies. Lūdzu, man jānoliek klausu. Čau, čau! And... So then um, you mentioned back to Sweden. So this uh, your own childhood mm -hmm. in the city where there is no nature, where there are no resources, where there is no your, not, none of your native people or your kin that you you would be able to grow up with with your native culture. You are ripped off and put into this city where you are have to go to school all day long. You are away from your mother, even from your father. Tough, very tough, very hard, really. So, but you had good friends there, yeah. You had good. I was always loved because I have an energy which is undescribable to other people. People get happy from me because I have this love in my eyes and my energy, my, my lifehood, my energy which is the energy of life is created throughout the sun and, and so therefore people get warm and loving from me and I have never actually experienced the hate that so many speaks of, of this country and I was quite uh, uh, shocked to hear about that there could actually be hate because I in my own world had never experienced it except of all of the dealment with hate, aggression, and secrecy in coming in and involving itself in the life. So, yes.